Hi guys, welcome back to Ed's Garage. Uh, so today I am going to disassemble this Chevy Spark uh, module here, this uh, electric uh, module. Uh, this is the, out of the six packs that I pulled out, out of the six modules that I pulled out of the main pack, this is the failed one. So it's a little bit darker. Uh, if you haven't already seen my other videos, don't forget to go to the channel and check out the previous videos in regard to uh, disassembly of this Spark battery pack. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you thought this video was interesting or if it helped you out in some way. In any event, uh, one of these cells in here is not as good as the other ones. Um, one basically doesn't have as much uh, storage capacity anymore. Um, and then the whole pack, I was only getting about uh, 2200 watt hours out of this pack when charged from 100, when discharged from 100% down to about 5%. Um, all the other packs, I was getting 2400 um, watt hours and this one is just the worst. So this is why the pack needed to be replaced. In any event, um, this is a 67 volt pack now when fully charged or 60 volt pack uh, nominal. Um, but I can't really use that for much. So I want to separate these cells uh, so that I can use them for, you know, 12 volts, 24 volts, 48 volts, that sort of thing, or individual uh, cells <clears throat> running around three and a half to four, 4.2 volts. Uh, not sure exactly what I would use single cells for, but uh, basically I want to separate this down so that I can use it for different purposes other than just a 60 volt uh, module. So <clears throat> what we got to do is we have to pull out uh, the main uh, nuts and bolts that kind of tie everything together so they can see these ones run all the way through. Uh, the reason the bolts are at the bottom end, and you'll notice there's no bolts up here. The reason these are down here is because that's actually the coolant channels. So you'll notice you got the two uh, coolant lines, one in, one out, and it runs down into here. And each one of these cell packs is sealed to the next. So there's actually a lot of points of failure here, potentially. <laughs> so there's probably still going to be some uh, some coolant in here. So I'm going to get some rags, put it underneath, and I'm just going to start disassembling things and uh, we'll see where we get to. Um, the tricky bit is going to be pulling each one of these um, uh, spot welded tabs apart. Uh, you can see right here, uh, they're, I don't even know if they're spot welded or just sort of pressure fit. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what kind of means is used to connect those together, but uh, in any event, I got to pull all of those apart. Um, and then this uh, bus line that runs through the center here, obviously that's going to be useless as well. So yeah, just going to start um, disassembling and see what happens. Let's get to it. All right, so I'm starting to, get an, uh, starting to get an understanding of how this is put together. Um, so I've, I mean, it seems obvious at first, but when you start taking it apart, it's like you start to understand what they did here. So these little bars here, obviously, uh, they go all the way across. You'll notice uh, I took these two, I'm, I'm loosening them, and I'm starting to see expansion here. So basically, this is all being squeezed together because these cells, obviously, when they expand, when they get hot or you know, when they're charging, they, they start to get fatter. So this whole structure is designed to keep it all pressed together. Um, the difficulty therein is that this strap on top um, needs to come off and it's quite tight. So you'll notice that I started to lift it up, but I don't want to inadvertently short this out. Of course, this is metal. So I'm going to start, uh, my next thing here is I'm going to start separating these cells. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to figure out how to get in between there and separate them so that I, I'm reducing the overall voltage here. So if I do accidentally short something out, it's not going to be a problem. So 
<laughs> some of these little weld points are a lot harder to get apart than others. Um, these managed to come apart really, really easily, as did this one. This one was a little bit difficult. This one was a disaster just getting this apart. It just looks like it was chewed by a rat. Um, but the highest voltage here now is 8 volts, so I'm no longer worried about it. Uh, I did have a little bit of a spark uh, situation here for a split second, but that was only 8 volts. So, again, not too big a deal. Uh, so, now that I've got most of those separated and somewhat safe, we're going to go ahead and uh, disconnect everything here. I'm going to go ahead and pull off the, the bus bar. Uh, I think I could probably just yank it off, to be honest. Yeah, there we go. Don't need that. All right. Uh, now I think I can pull this off now. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about is I see some plastic rivets holding this top plastic piece on. Um, I don't think I need to take those off though, because I think I'll be able to slide the cells out down through in a bit, but Kind of hard to explain what I mean. Um, I think I'm going to have to basically just loosen all these before I start taking it apart. So maybe I'll just do that first. They're just, I don't know, they're just held together really, really tight. And... Oh, <laughs> it's only eight volts. <laughs> I've already disconnected enough that it's not high voltage. Anymore. All right, finally managed to get all of the cells separated. Each one was connected with one of these U-shaped pieces of copper. Now I have a whole bunch of excess chunks of copper that I'm not going to need for anything. And let me tell you, now that I've done that, I really like the configuration of these modules and they're going to stay the same going forward because holy moly, that was a pain in the butt. So every single one is disconnected. Uh, I'm actually now ready to pull off this piece here. It's still held on by a couple of plasti welds, um, kind of like plastic rivets. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> It's not held on very well though. So there we go, that's off. And now we can see um, a bit more. <laughs> not a whole lot more, but a bit more. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna take this, this piece off here and then I'll probably, yeah, the thing's gonna start coming apart after I pull this off. So let's get the camera on the side here. Okay, I can actually see the tops of the pouches now. So, interesting. Getting closer to some sort of result of some sort. Woo! That was under some tension. My lord. <laughs> wow, okay. That was under a lot of tension. Thank goodness. Okay. So... I think it just goes to show just how much these pouch cells have flexed and it will continue to flex if I can find my wrench. There it is. So now I'm going to get these bolts out of here. All right, there we go. One cell liberated. All right, so these are very soft. Just a typical pouch cell, the same as what you'd find in a, in like a, a tablet or a uh, phone or something like that. So you can see we have LGX space P2.6 NL028X1 and NL028111181. And another set of numbers here. I will hold this here. Go ahead and, and pause the video if you're looking for those numbers, please. Now the question is, 
Can these pouch cells come off of this backing or are they glued on? Hmm. There's definitely a lot of Yeah, it's a lot of coolant here now. You can see what the other side of this pouch cell looks like, but check this out actually. So this is the this is the the, the cooling uh, channels here, uh, and this is quite interesting. So it looks like the coolant channel actually runs in between every single individual cell. That's quite a unique design, actually. Huh. Well, there we go. One complete lithium ion polymer pouch cell. Interesting. Wow. I don't know if I can show you this or not, but this is the cooling channel. And it looks as though coolant actually runs right through here to the other side. That is impressive. Look at how thin this is. So in order to cool these cells, individual cells, they actually have coolant channels between every single two batteries. That is super cool. We then have a separator here. A little foam. Looking like a shock absorption pad of some sort. I can come in handy for if I go to reuse these batteries. Let's take this one apart. So this is interesting. Um, I thought there were 16 cells, but actually there isn't. There is more than that. There's 32 cells in each pack. And this is not a this is not a 16S configuration. This is a 16S2P configuration because there's two parallel cells for every uh, set of series. All right, I have liberated every single cell from this battery module. Um, there's 32 in total, as I mentioned. As you can see, I've actually stacked them here in sort of somewhat of an organization. This one is actually glued to this cover, so I don't want to try to pry it out because uh, there's a possibility that if I start to pull it out that the casing may rip and that would be very dangerous and very bad. So I'm just going to leave it. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I put one of these things together, I'll probably just use these anyway. Um, and then, yeah, clamp it all together. Uh, so what I've got here is a stack of cells that is pretty good. It doesn't really, uh, like they're not, they're not really expanded at all. Um, they seem pretty flat. Uh, this one here is a little bit better, uh, a little bit, uh, expanded in some, uh, I think it's, I don't know if it's expanded or if it's just that they're kind of rounded. This one, this stack here is, is quite bad. Uh, this is sort of the worst of the bunch and they've really, you know, some of them are, are a little bit fatter in the middle. So these are probably the ones that just aren't going to be as good. Uh, but I won't know for sure until I do a discharge test on all of them. So I'm going to have to charge them up to 4.2 volts and then do a discharge test on all 32 uh, to see, you know, which one of these is garbage or if they're just all roughly the same well then I, I can still use them so again to recap this is the bad pack um, but these individual cells are going to be uh, quite handy anyway uh, to give you an idea um, how these cells might be used each one of these uh, packet cells is about 70 watt hours of energy so to give you an idea, this is a 2180 milliamp hour battery. It puts out about seven watt hours. So each one of these is about 10 of these on a good day. Um, but these are a higher discharge. So these can be basically discharged a lot faster. So if I wanted to, I could use these in an e-bike or something like that. Uh, whereas these particular cells, I can't. I mean, they're, you can get 18650s that do have uh, high discharge, but this particular style, or this, this one's just a cheap Chinese one. Um, so these ones, uh, these are good cells. Uh, not sure exactly what I'm going to use them for yet, but I'll probably 
do uh, a set, uh, a few sets of 12 volt um, packs that we can use for various different things. So, but I think that's where I'm going to cut the video off for now. I'll uh, upload this tonight and um, hopefully this helped you out. Uh, if you're interested in this sort of thing, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any comments, by all means, don't forget to comment below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.